Gangsters and Gunslingers has allowed the American Museum to frame two important moments in American history. The first is about the Wild West in the second half of the 19th century, and the second one is about the 1920s and the 1930s, the era of prohibition and the rise of organized crime. And what the exhibition has enabled us to do is to link these two periods, not just because of the iconic figures uh, that emerged from them, but also because it was Hollywood more than anything else that told their story, you know, factually or not quite accurately, and has, has kept those moments alive to the, to the present day. In seeking objects for this particular exhibition, uh, there were key figures I wanted represented. So I wanted the gunslingers, for instance, at the OK Corral uh, to be represented in the show. And the collector that we've worked with, he thankfully had, for instance, uh, Doc Holliday's medical bag. Yeah, I'm always fascinated with Holliday. There's a bag here of his. It's a medical bag, but which he kept basically for keeping um, gambling instruments with. Um, you know, Holiday came from a cultured Georgian family, but with the Civil War, lost all their money, um, dying of tuberculosis, he went, moved west, where of course the climate was easier, but uh, not easy on him, basically. Um, he was an unpleasant, garrulous, uh, argumentative, and was a killer. What made him go that way? The very thought, of course, that he was coughing his lungs out every day, and another day alive is another day alive. So that was the way he looked at it. He wanted to have fun. Wanted to have fun. Let's shoot a few people before I die. <laughs> the objects that we have in the show uh, indicate other facets to these people's stories. We see, for instance, the poverty that many of the uh, the Depression era gangsters were living in. Uh, Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, for instance, spent the last part of their lives just living in a car. As she would sometimes say to Clyde, I'm starving, Clyde. We've got no money, we've got no food. Well, we can't go out nowhere because, I mean, the police is out there looking for us. And that was the way that it was. So then it was rob a store, grab a hundred bucks, 10 bucks, or some cans of beef, and then hide out for a little while longer. Sounds great, robbing it, going to a bank with your guns blaring, didn't happen like that. And they knew fully uh, uh, sooner or later, of course, they would go down um, side by side, which of course uh, they did go down side by side. They weren't buried side by side. Uh, the families had disagreed by then. Lots of the money that went into making the westerns in the 30s and the 40s was actually mob money and the gangsters saw themselves as the heroes of the westerns, uh, men who stood alone against forces of not evil because of course they were very bad men, but uh, forces out to get them and they triumphed. And so it did make sense to have uh, the actors who were associated with key parts in Hollywood being represented in the show. In the, in the early days, before 1928, when the, when the silent movie is finished, um, we've got to do a Western film. Okay, uh, get some cowboys. They've got to be able to ride and shoot and jump up and down. They've got to look good. What about this guy, Tom Mix? Yeah, he's, he's a deputy sheriff from somewhere. He ain't nothing. Yeah, he'll do. And of course, Tom Mix became a big name star. His hat's on, 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 on display here because he could do everything that they wanted. He could ride, he could shoot, he looked good. He looked tall in the saddle and this, that and the other. When, of course, the movies uh, graduated in 1928 into being talkies, then you've got more sort of John Wayne um, type movies. And there's a John Wayne hat here, a given to a, um, a, a, the son of, of a Sheffield cinema proprietor uh, by John Wayne when he came over here uh, to promote a film, which he said to the son, OK, son, you like my hat, you have it. That's a very good question. Is this a show for all the family? I would like to think so, absolutely. Uh, we certainly have lots of digital presentations, for instance, that will appeal to younger people. For instance, we have created uh, a digital copy of all of Bonnie Parker's poems. So instead of just looking at the object in a glass case, uh, so it's very inanim inanimate, uh, people have an opportunity to actually uh, thumb through the pages of a digital book. For um, people who want to learn more, we have certainly included a lot of historical detail in the show. And that's because uh, these are 
very big iconic events in American history and we want to make sure that people have an opportunity to learn as much as they want to about them. It's going to be a one-off um, so people must just come and see it because you ain't going to see this again. Well, well, probably not in my lifetime. Anyway, you're not going to see all these great things um, put together. All right, some of them are notorious, some of them are murderous, uh, but it's history. It's a part of history that, well, that I enjoy looking at. Believe me, if I knew nothing about the Wild West, I'd come in here just have a look round. <laughs>